Ben here for Hack the Dino. Yes, we are still at Avcon 2019. I almost said 2017. Thinking back to better times, but I could have gotten away with it. Oh, well, we're out the front of a little game company, Quiet Developers. You may have heard of them. They're called Nintendo. And this is Jordan from Nintendo, and he's going to talk to us about Nintendo. Hi, Mr. Nintendo. <laughs> hey, how's it going? So what are you doing here with uh, Avcon? What's Nintendo's presence here? Um, we just want to bring a bunch of our games that we've either had out since 2017 when the Switch launched and stuff that's a bit more recent. That's why I said 2017. Yeah. It's when the Switch launched. I'm a professional. Yeah. and <laughs> So we've got Super Mario Maker 2, which came out just last month. So maybe not even, not even two weeks. No. Um, so that's been out for a little while. So we've got people playing through the story mode on that. Um, and then we have the handheld table for the making part of that. So people can make their own levels on that because the touchscreen is really nice to use for that kind of thing. And then playing the big story mode levels uh, on the TVs there. I also noticed you've got a couple of little competitions going as well with some Nintendo freebies. Yeah, we like, we, we like bringing the freebies to Avcon actually because people are always really keen. We've got the challenge wall here. So we've got Super Mario U Deluxe. Uh, on there, we've also got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and on the other side, we've got Captain Toad Treasure Tracker and Yoshi's Crafted World. So, the Yoshi's Crafted World and Captain Toad side, that's a score challenge. So, beat the, uh, beat the score, which for those games is collecting the items like the smiley flowers in Yoshi or the diamonds in Captain Toad. Yep. Uh, you also have to beat the boss in it and get a certain amount of coins as well for that one. Uh, and on this side, it's time trials. So beating the time within with a certain amount of time left on New Super Mario Bros U Deluxe and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is uh, Mario Circuit 150ccs. It's They're not hard, but it's just a little bit of a taste for people who maybe haven't played competitive before and they just kind of want to dip their toe in. Um, and then we'll just give them free stuff. Free stuff's awesome. I came in and got it all. Uh, we came in before opening with my daughter, who's 11 years old, and she creams me on Mario Kart, so yeah. I wasn't even going to try that. But then Mario U... Yeah. Uh, I had a go to speed run it in a certain time and she laughed at me because I died on the first Goomba. She couldn't even finish the level. Yeah. So Parker, if you ever watch Daddy's videos, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean... Anyway, <laughs> we've got some really cool games coming up from you guys soon. I am a little bit of a Nintendo fan. Um, oh yeah? Just, yeah, just a couple, bits. Just a couple yeah. of bits and pieces. Uh, first thing I'd love to, for you to hear about from you is uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. Yep. Uh, that's coming up soon. There's no release date yet, and we won't hit you up for when that's released as right, an exclusive or <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> we wouldn't dream of doing that. Um, yeah, what can you tell us about that? Uh, well, it's kind of our closest thing we've got to a survival horror game coming from a first party, like Nintendo perspective. Anything where you play as Luigi, you have to survive it because he's just hot trash. Yeah, he's had a bad run. Like, people do like to dunk on the old Luigi. We gave him a year all to himself a little Yeah, while. yeah, and that year, the year of Luigi, was Nintendo's lowest grossing profit uh, for the past 30 years or something. So, <laughs> Luigi? Yeah, don't disappoint us this time. <laughs> nah, he'll do fine. I've actually seen, like, from what we saw at E3 as well, especially, such a nice looking game as well. The atmosphere in it is excellent. The multiplayer in it is going to be great. The Gooigi aspect of it, which was they introduced in Luigi's Mansion, uh, uh, the 3DS uh, oh, remake, the remake of number one. Yep. Um, so having that as like a as an additional part of Luigi's Mansion one was cool, but this is a core part of the game now. So I really think it's going to be super handy and really like a game changer as opposed to. You know, there's some differences in number two from number one, but this will be like a, a whole new gameplay mechanic, which will really make it feel like a good sequel. So what's Gooigi really made of? It's snots, isn't it? It looks like boogers. I reckon it's, it's boogers. It's, it's snot Luigi. Yes. <laughs> uh, one of the mechanics that I really love about it from what I saw on that uh, E3 video was the fact that Luigi can half suck the ghosts in and just belt them on the ground like that. And they're already dead, so it's not an animal cruelty or anything. No, it's fine. They can use, he can use as much force as he wants. He ain't hurt nobody. Uh, no, nobody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan from Nintendo. He'll be here all today. Yeah. Uh, now you were talking before about Astral Chain that's yeah. coming out, and this is specifically your jam. Dan, who's our co-host, uh, is a big fan of this. Yeah. Tell us what you like about Astral Chain. I love Platinum Games. They, they could do no wrong. They're just, they're just weird enough to be like it's, it's so obviously Japanese, like Bayonetta. For example, they did Nier Automata as yep, well. Yep. Um, one of the leads from Nier Automata is 
the is working on Astral Chain as well. Oh, wow. So they've got this sweet pedigree of just like all these great artists as well as the some character designers from some really old manga, like the guy that designed the Legion, which are your um, your anime cop like buddy, yeah. like your partner. They're these interdimensional beings that they've captured. That was designed by a guy who did Zetman. I don't know if you've heard of that. I can't remember his name, it's Japanese, um, but he's a very, very legendary artist and he's just got such an iconic mech style. So that really shows through in Astral Chain as well. You look at all the different creature designs and stuff like that. It's so iconic, it just makes you want to just like, oh my god, it's so good, I want to chop things with it. And what I really like about it is Platinum Games has come out, I think, two or three weeks ago and said, oh yeah, this is planned part one of a trilogy. So if you buy it and it sells, we'll make, we'll make others. That was, I think that was a mistranslation actually. I don't oh, think that, yeah. No, don't say that. Yeah, yeah. It's in, the, they, they were like, what? No, we, no, what? <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to them. Don't, don't listen to the Nintendo I authority. I would prefer it to be a trilogy, honestly. I would play that in any format that they choose to give it to me in. Just give me more anime cops, man. I'm down. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I'm bitterly disappointed. Uh, another game you've got coming out very, very soon is Pokemon. Uh, I was going to say, oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> My thought process then, I went to go, let's snap. Yeah. Because I want a Pokemon snap on yeah. the Switch, but that's not coming. We've got Sword and Shield. Now, what can you tell us about that? Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield set in the Gala, Gala region, which is Europe, essentially. Um, what I think is really cool about Sword and Shield, actually, is for the first time, we've got a actual British guy who works for Game Freak who is designing all the Pokemon. He's yeah, the lead designer for the Pokemon yeah. this time, which is amazing for a Japanese company to come out and be like you're in charge of this one you get it like especially Pokemon yeah especially Pokemon and like their creature design is you know what has made them the huge juggernaut of brand that they are now um, so for them to let someone take the reins like that is just kind of really exciting I'm, I'm keen to see what like different sort of weird left wing kind of stuff that we haven't seen before just come out from, from this game who are you going to pick who's your starter uh, probably the bunny I like score bunny yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Are you a soccer or football fan? Not really. Like, I, like my my family's English, so like, I was kind of I grew up in that environment. But it's, yeah, it's not my thing. I'm an inside boy. Like, I, I play Nintendo games all day. I don't go outside. Well, I play Pokemon Go, but like, that's my forcing myself to go outside. <laughs> Personally, I'm going after that grass monkey, that funky like monkey, yeah. grass monkey. I think for me, it'll depend on the evolutions as well. So if they show us the evolutions beforehand. Um, if I'm like, eh, it's not, I like them cute. If it stays cute, I'll, I'll keep it. But if it's like too big and bulky, I'll be like, oh, no, I'll just, I'll just go with the other guy. Yeah. And possibly the biggest surprise for me this year uh, was the announcement of Link's Awakening uh, yeah, the coming yeah. to Switch, which just out of nowhere. Now, I heard a rumor that originally it was a dungeon creator level that they've got in there, mm. and then they had extra room, and they just went, oh, well, we can, we can just do the other put the game on there yeah let's just remake the game i didn't hear that actually um i know that the, the chamber dungeon is a uh, is the is the main addition to the game they've kept it pretty much exactly the same as the storyline and the plot points of link's awakening they've just done an amazing recreation of it which is great because i don't know about you but i find it really hard to go back to game boy games they're too punishing for me i'm a retro gamer i play those things every day me too but like snes era is where i'm where i sit pretty just because you've got, you can save and you go back to the certain point, but like Game Boy and NES especially, I, I don't have a lot of free time. So like if I'm getting punished and I have to start from the beginning, and you know, I'm like, no nah, man, this game sucks. Well, I mean, back in those days, we didn't have a lot of money and you bought a game and that had to last you about eight months. So they had to make it hard. Yeah, I was the same too. Like growing up, I had a NES um, and then we got the 64 and even that was similar. But my birthday's at the end of the year, so I only got one game a year. So like I got Birthmas. 64 games, so I'd have to play the game all year until. It I'm so out. sorry. <laughs> so what I a horrible thing. Informed choices about what games I picked up at Christmas. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So they're the big three coming out. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. There was another one you wanted to talk about. Uh, Damian X Marker. Yes. Uh, we had that. Uh, uh, was it a try and break it early type deal where yeah, the, uh, yeah. they wanted to do all the faults? What can you tell us about that one? Uh, so Damian X Marker is all your anime mech fantasies that we haven't had satisfied since the last Armored Core game. So the Armored Core series is where these guys have come from and they're working with Nintendo to make this game which is uh, more stylized and it's also got heavy metal thrown throughout it. Like it just, it's just 
I don't know, it's pretty badass piloting on a mech and you like skid across the floor really stylishly, you can jump up and fly around the air. You got giant swords as well, so you can just like switch gun to sword and stuff like that and just wreck falls. It's, oh, it's so much fun. Oh man, if only they had gun swords like in Final Fantasy because they're, sh what? <laughs> anyway, this has been Jordan from Nintendo. Thank you very much for your time today. You've got a stall to run. Uh, you're probably watching this and Avcon's over, so... Sorry, you can't come down, but Nintendo will be in an area near you. You've said you've got a lot more events coming up. Yeah, we're doing events all over the country. We will often do stuff during the school holidays at shopping centres and stuff like that, but we'll be at PAX, definitely. PAX, definitely. There you go. Get on down to PAX and don't get pox at PAX. Yeah. Man, that is a bad ending, but I'm just going <laughs> to stop it there. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry.